Welcome back everyone. I'm Robin from This Blog's Neat and today we're going to try an American rum. You don't often hear about a lot of American rum distilleries, which is kind of weird because rum was such a huge part in colonialization of America. Hi! Hi, come here. Come on. Hi, baby girl. <laughs> okay. And I'm not gonna dive into the history of rum and the US, but if you are interested, please let me know and I will do a video on that. So there are not a whole bunch of American distilleries that are solely focusing on producing rums. However, Privateer is one of them. They are based in Ipswich, Massachusetts. And I've often heard Privateer referred to as the best American rum distillery. And I, want to know if you agree with that statement or not. Is there another American rum distillery out there that you would rate higher than Privateer? Let me know. I'm really interested. I haven't sampled a whole lot of American rum distilleries. I have tried a handful, but I know there are a lot more out there. And yeah, I want to know who is giving Privateer a run for their money. Anyways, let's talk about Privateer. They are a distillery, as I said, in Ipswich, Massachusetts. They were founded in 2011 and they produce rums using grade A molasses they source from Guatemala. They claim that they do a longer fermentation, which relative to fermentations for whiskey, it is a lot longer. It's around six days for their rums to ferment and they use a proprietary yeast blend. What I think is really cool about Privateer is they really focus on transparency. They don't have any additives in any of their rums, so there's no sweetener being added in here. They're also not filtered, and most of them, if not all of them, correct me if I'm wrong, are bottled at batch strength or cask strength. They have a number of different releases, they really, really focus on aged rums. As you can see here, this is clearly an aged rum. And they do a lot of their aging in new charred American oak barrels. Although they do have some that are aged in used casks. I went to a Rum Curious event. If you haven't heard of the Rum Curious Club, check out Brian, AKA the Rum Champion over on Instagram. It was a really cool event um, and I got to try a whole bunch of different privateer releases. And like I said, a lot of their rums are aged in new charred American oak, so it was various batches of that. And some of those were single barrels. I did try one that was aged in an X rum barrel, so like a previously used one of their barrels, which just had like a little less oak influence on it, which was fun. But yeah, this one right here, what I have right here, is part of their Letter of Mark Private Barrel series. This one was bottled for K&L Wine Merchants, and you've heard me talk about K&L before. If you've picked up this bottle or one of K&L's batches of Privateer, this is batch number two. It's aged five years in New American Oak, and it's bottled at cask strength, which is 57.4% ABV. Now, I picked this up on sale. <laughs> Normally it's priced at $70, but this was on sale for $46. So yeah. Now, before I taste this, I do want to give a huge shout out to the Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel and for being a part of our neat community over on Patreon. Now, if you, the viewer, would also like to support the channel, you could do the normal YouTube things, right? Like subscribe, share the videos with your friends, watch more of my videos, leave me comments. But I would also be really, really appreciative if you went over and joined us over on Patreon. So I've got a link in the description below if you would like to do that. So let's go ahead and taste. So you can see there's a nice rich color here. You know, this has a good caramel copper color to it. Now, if you're looking at my glass right now and thinking, wow, that's a really neat glass. <laughs> 
These are available over on my website. They are perfect for traveling with. I'm not going to lie. I always pack one with me when I travel, especially if I know that I'm going to be visiting distilleries. I am that person who shows up to a distillery with their own glass because I really don't like it when I'm tasting in the little plastic cups. <laughs> so I'll usually have one of these packed in like fits in a fanny pack, fits in a purse, like obviously it fits in a purse, purses are huge, but like will even fit in a fanny pack. And I'll pull this out and ask if I can use that. So I am that person. And you could be that person too. So yeah, you can head over to my website. There's a link in the description below that takes you straight over to my merch section where you can pick these up. Anyways, okay, so. So on the nose, I'm getting some fruits and some caramel. Definitely a lot of caramel. A little butterscotch now. I lost the fruits, I need to get them back. Maybe a little bit of like stewed apples and peaches. Mm. I might take the peaches back. <laughs> yeah, it's a little more like stewed apples, golden raisins, but a lot, a lot of caramel. I'm getting a little bit of heat on the nose and a little bit of this like an antique, like dusty oak thing. There's a little bit of waxiness. Hmm. That's now maybe transforming into a little bit of like, if you blended together, <laughs> if you blended together marzipan and Play-Doh. No, not Play-Doh, Silly Putty. <laughs> Sounds so weird. Ooh, I'm getting some orange oils now. Ooh, fun, fun, fun and a little bit just like in the distance some cinnamon bark there's a little mustiness now as if that like dusty wood is now a little damp maybe like the tiniest bit of like a sweet tobacco so that and the cinnamon are also like far in the distance with one another okay let's go in for a sip so the heat on the palate not too bad for 57.4% ABV. I expected a little bit more body to the mouthfeel, a little bit more viscosity. I remember when doing the Rum Curious tasting event that there was a lot of body on the privateer rums that we tried. So I was expe expecting a little bit more from this, but maybe it's my palate today. And that's not to say that there isn't a nice viscosity because it is building into this little creamy viscosity, but I just wanted, you know, more. I wanted my full mouth to be coated. Anyways, there's a lot of notes that are reminiscent of bourbon, which sounds weird, but it definitely comes from the new charred oak barrels, the new charred American oak. I'm getting a lot of that waxiness, a little bit of like these dark spices coming through. I need to go in for another sip because I already forgot. Lots of caramel, hints of spicy vanilla, but it's like a lot of cinnamon and cloves. There's a little bit of like orange zest as well, maybe hints of cranberry a touch of like an espresso finish. But yeah, this is, it's really interesting that this is giving me a lot of like bourbon characteristics, especially on the palate. I'd be interested to see if I gave this to someone blind who is a bourbon drinker, if they would try to think that this was some like weird finished, barrel finished bourbon or something. This is really nice. I'm glad I picked it up for $46. I don't know that I would pay 70 for it, but for $46, a five-year-old American whiskey, that's really nice. Like, yeah, this is definitely worth it. Now, as compared to Privateer's other releases, I don't really know how this compares because I'm tasting this alone. <laughs> um, but one thing with single barrel expressions is that I don't often find them like super complex and that's because they are just single barrels. Whereas with a blend, you get a lot more complexity because you're getting 
notes from a lot of different barrels. So I would say if you are interested in checking out Privateer, check out one of their flagship products. Um, I think it's called their Navy Yard is one that's a blend and that was a nice little intro. That was the first thing we started with during the tasting and that was a nice little intro to Privateer. Ooh, smells bourbony. Is this Asian bourbon barrels? No. But it's New American Elk. Yep. So kind of. It's aged as if it were a it, bourbon. It tastes like a bourbon. Do you think in a lineup with this and, and bourbons, you could pick out that it was a rum? Yeah. But I bet a lot of people get it wrong. But I have been trained by the best, so I would pick it up. Oh, okay. All right. It's very good, though. All right. If you've tried anything from Privateer, let me know in the comments below what you think, uh, what your favorite Privateer expression is. And like I said earlier, let me know what distillery you think, what rum distillery in the U.S. is making the best rums. I'd really be interested to try them because I'd like to expand the American rums that I've tried. I didn't do a bottle pop because I broke the cork the first time I opened it. So yeah, let's see if I can get a little, little bottle pop from, oh, no, that wasn't. <laughs> nope, nope, not very good. Okay. Hi, what are you doing? Are you going? Goodbye.